Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. I'm back with new video uh, on developmental anatomy. The topics of current anatomy, uh, the video is uh, very interesting. That is primitive tube in human development. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. I am Professor Dr. Mahmouda Begum, Head Department of Anatomy, Ardhin Women's Medical College, Mogbaja, Dhaka. I am grateful to Allah for giving this opportunity to discuss about the de human development. Human development is the outstanding creature of Allah. Welcome everybody to enjoy this class. Let us start our session. Today, uh, there is a primitive uh, tube in human development. There is about three primitive tubes. The slide showing there is a three tubes. This is the neural tube, uh, which is responsible for the formation of the central nervous system. Now, this is the primitive heart tube. And this uh, heart tube is responsible for the development of the cardiovascular system. And these are the uh, primitive gut tube, which is also responsible for the development of the gastrointestinal tract and also the respiratory system and part of the some uh, part of the urinary system. Now, what are the objectives of my uh, presentations? After end of this presentation, uh, we are able to know the timing where the different primitive tube is uh, arise and also what are the germ layer is responsible for the formation of this tube. And also uh, how in a simple mechanism this tube is development. And last is the diabetes of this tube. This slide there is showing the three germ layer from superficial to deep. This is the ectoderm and mesoderm and endoderm. The germ layer is the first stage of the embryology. And these uh, three germ layer is responsible because all the organs in our body are gradually laid down from these three germ layer. Now we uh, start the neural tube. Before we start that, uh, we uh, want to uh, describe the which germ layer is responsible, ectoderm. And we know the ectoderm was differentiated into two parts, that is the surface ectoderm and neuroectoderm. And neuroectoderm also differentiated into three parts, neural tube, neural crest, and also the endodermal placards. Our focus on the neural tube. Timing at the end of the third week of the development, when the notochord and precordal plate is uh, appears, they can initiate the overlying ectoderm to become thickened and form the neural plate. This is the neural plate. This is the notochord. Uh, they can initiate the overlying ectoderm uh, to form a thickened plane neural plate. And so this neural plate cell comes from the neuroectoderm and their induction represents the initial events in the process of the neurulation. So neural tube is formed the process. This is known as the neurulations. And once induction has occurred, this elongated, this elongated neural plate that is, uh, it is like a slippery shape and this uh, it uh, expanded uh, gradually uh, towards the primitive stick. Uh, so the end of the uh, third week, the lateral edge of the neural plate, uh, which is elevated and form the neural fold. This is the neural fold. And this uh, mid region of the neural plate, which becomes uh, invaginate and form a group, this is known as the neural group. Gradually, the neural fold uh, becomes closed opposition and uh, fused and ultimately fused and fusion begins at the cervical regions and after that that direction both the cephalic and caudal as a result their formation the tube is known as the neural tube like this this is the neural tube they can fuse gradually and form the neural tube the fate of the neural tube that is the uh, when up till complete the uh, fusion the neural 
tube has the two pore the cephalic and caudal pore through this pore they can communicate with the umbilical uh, they can communicate with the amniotic cavity and at the, uh, the both pore uh, in the different times they can fuse and ultimately they form a closed neural tube and this tube is responsible for the formation of the central nervous system the derivatives of the neural tube now the derivatives uh, most caudal end of the neural tube uh, this uh, form responsible for the formation of the spinal cord but much broader cephalic portion they are characterized by number of dilatation known as the brain vesicle so that is the first there is three brain vesicle it is known as the primary brain vesicle and after that uh, they can again differentiate it and form five uh, brain vesicle which is known as the secondary brain vesicles these brain vesicle first there is a three uh, most cephalic this is known as the forebrain or prosencephalon and midbrain it is known as the um, Mesencephalon and this is the hindbrain or the rhombencephalon. This uh, forebrain, this is the prosencephalon, again uh, differentiate and form the two vesicles. One is the telencephalon, another is the diencephalon. And midbrain, it is not differentiate, it is the same with the mesencephalon, but rhombencephalon also differentiate into the two forms, metencephalon and myelencephalon. And most caudal is the spinal cord. Now the derivatives, this is the uh, telencephalon, which is responsible for the formation of the olfactory uh, lobes, hippocampus and cerebrum. And diencephalon, there is a different part, thalamus, hypothalamus, metathalamus, subthalamus and also it extra form the retina. The midbrain, which form the midbrain. And this is the metencephalon, which are responsible for the formation of the cerebellum and pons and myelencephalon from which it uh, developed the medulla oblongata and the ultimately the caudal part is the spinal cord. Now the primitive heart tube. For the formation of the primitive heart tube, some events should memorize. First is the where the cardiogenic field is established and second that present the some cell cluster, angiogenic cell cluster. This angiogenic cell cluster gradually uh, coalesces and form the tube. So both two tubes, endocardial tube is formed and when the two endocardial tube is uh, fused, they form the primitive, single primitive heart tube. So first is the what are the cells are responsible for this uh, heart tube formation. There is the two uh, tissue uh, is responsible. First is the midline splanchnopleuric mesenchyme of the lateral plate mesoderm and second is the some contribution in the neural crest mesenchyme. So these uh, cardiac progenitor cell they are first appear this is the flat uh, slippery shaped embryo first appear in the lateral side of the primitive stick and then grow gradually they can uh, migrate through the stick uh, towards the cephalic region. And the cell, when uh, ultimate their destination, uh, rostral to the bacopharyngeal membrane and also the neural fold. So the, those are the angiogenic cell cluster. They are located in the cardiogenic plate. They are gradually coalescence and form right and left, uh, primit, uh, right and left endocardial tube. Each tube, uh, they have the two communication, cephalic and caudal. Cephalic region, they are continuous with the dorsal aorta. It is the it uh, becomes the outflow tract of the primitive um, heart tube, and the uh, caudal part, which is communicate with the uh, vital uh, umbilical vein, uh, which gives the inflow tract of the primitive tube. Due to the uh, different fold of the embryo, like the cephalocaudal and lateral fold, the two endocardial tube they can close a position and fused and to form a primitive single primitive heart tube this is the two endocardial uh, tube they can fuse and form ultimately the single and they have the two end cranial end and caudal end cranial end is usually the arterial outflow tract and um, caudal end is the venous it is the inflow tract of the Primitive heart tube is elongated, so they have some alternate dilatation and constriction. So different part is arise the primitive heart tube. From the cephalic to caudal, first is the truncus arteriosus, second is the bulbus cordis, third is the primitive ventricle, and 
Uh, fourth is the PBT bacteria and fifth is the sinus venosus. This truncus arteriosus, which ultimately continues with the aortic sac and from which the aortic arch is the developed. And the sinus venosus, they have the two horns. Sinus venosus have the two horns and each horn they receive three veins, umbilical vein, vitellin vein and the cardinal, uh, common cardinal vein. Now, what are the derivatives of the different parts of the primitive heart tube? Truncus arteriosus, which gives the out and pulmonary trunk, bulbous cortis, which is responsible for the smooth part of the both ventricle, and primitive ventricle, which is responsible for the tra uh, trabeculated part of the both ventricle, and primitive atria, which also gives the trabeculated part of the both atria. Sinus venosus, which is responsible for the coronary sinus and the smooth part of the right atrium. So, a smooth part of the left atrium, it is de uh, developed due to the absorption of the four pulmonary vein. Now, the primitive gut tube. This is the yolk sac. It is the mainly responsible for the formation of the primitive gut tube. And this endo uh, yolk sac is lined by the endoderm. And gradually, they can incorporate it. And lastly, they can form an uh, elongated uh, primitive gut tube. So, primitive gut tube actually result due to the cephalocaudal and the lateral folding of the embryo. Uh, portion of the yolk sac gradually incorporated the embryo at the time of the fourth week of the development and it is formed the primitive gut tube. So, some portion of the yolk sac and also the allantois, it is also outside the embryo. So, this is the primitive gut tube and uh, this is the portion of the allantois, uh, the yolk sac outside the uh, in the cephalic and the caudal region of the primitive gut tube is a blind loop. Huh? This is the blind loop, uh, area, but the middle part of the gut, this is the uh, gut tube which is communicated with the yolk sac through a duct, which is known as the vital duct. This is the uh, mid portion of the uh, primitive gut tube, it is communicated with the uh, yolk sac through the vital duct. And also, this is the hind gut, it is uh, extend up to the cloacal membrane. Now the derivatives of the foregut. Most cephalic is the uh, pharyngeal gut. Uh, from there, uh, it is uh, developed in uh, the mouth cavity, tongue, tonsil, and salivary gland. And foregut, that is from the uh, tracheobronchial diverticulum uh, to the arise of the liver bud. This region gives the suffragus, stomach, duodenum. The first part and second part up to the mesoduodenal papilla. And also, they gives the some associated organ like the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. Now, the derivatives of the midgut. This midgut derives the duodenum uh, from distal to the mesoduodenal papilla and loop of the jejunum ileum and appendix, cecum, ascending colon, and right two third of the transverse colon. And derivatives of the hindgut. So. Uh, left one third of the transverse colon and descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and upper part of the anal canal. Upper part that means the up to the uh, above the pectinate line and also hindgut give the lining epithelium of the umbilical uh, urinary bladder and urethra. I am off. Uh, I hope uh, this presentation uh, should uh, help to my dear students and viewers. Please uh, everybody say subhanallah, uh, take care, Allah Hafiz.